welcome to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our coverage of HFES 2018. My name is Nick Rome. I'm joined by Blake Arnsdorf, and today we have Dr. Tony Andre joining us. Tony, thank you for being on the show. Welcome. We're happy to have you. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. So I want to jump into sort of your experience in Human Factors um, and just to kind of get our listeners acquainted with some of your work. Can you kind of explain a little bit where you've been and where you are at now? Sure. Well, my experience uh, spans 34 years. Um, I've been involved in the field since 1984 when I started as an undergrad and uh, did undergrad, master's, PhD in the field. It's been my whole life since 1984, basically. So that was a marquee (laughs) year for me. And um, I've had a few different careers, first as a research scientist and worked at NASA, a lot of aviation psychology, which is a common domain in our field. And then uh, I woke up one day with a full-time job working for NASA, prestigious organization with um, a realization that I would not be fulfilled applying uh, this field to one domain. You know, I'm the kind of guy I walk through a store, I drive down a street, I see human factors everywhere. And I decided that one day that I was going to apply human factors to anything and everything I could in, in life. And so I started a company with that as its kind of motto, uh, which was interesting. Everyone told me that's a bad business idea. (laughs) You have to be focused. Um, And I'm like, yeah, but I can't can't do it that way. And it really worked out. I mean, I've done everything and everything, you know, from the human factors of a box of wine to a mechanical pencil to a keyboard to a medical device. And uh, so I've been running a consultancy for 25 years, um, which now specializes more in healthcare. So I I actually came back to (laughs) kind of one domain, uh, but I'm still willing to work on anything. And I've been fortunate to be um, a teacher and mentor at San Jose State University for 25 years. And that's a big passion of mine. Right, Uh, yeah. So Tony, I wanna talk to you a little bit about HFES, the organization, you are very involved with this. Um, And one question that we have gotten a lot since we've been here this week, especially, and I kind of want to broadcast this out, is what makes HFES unique in in comparison to some of these other conferences? Okay, so that's a great question. Well, to be successful in human factors and to make a difference, you have to base what you do on science, right? Right. Uh, design can't be purely anecdotal. There have to be evidence-based principles. That's a kind of a common industry term now. Um, and so the problem, not the problem, but the structure and purpose of many organizations is the application side, which is great. We need that. I mean, that's the reason we're all in this is to affect products and human interaction with, with products and environments. But making those products usable and safe has to come from science. And the reason I've devoted my professional career volunteer-wise to this society, I'm a member of other societies, is it's the only society that is preserving the science. It stands for the science. And even if you think, I'm not a scientist, like I work for a company and we design consumer products. You know, we design iPhones, we design electric toothbrushes, we design products people use in their homes. Um, You have to design based on the science of human factors, human information processing, human interaction. You're using it even if you're not aware of it. You've learned from other people, from life, um, et cetera. Uh, And if you haven't, you're probably not doing a great job if science hasn't crept into your knowledge base. So we have to keep generating it because we have new paradigms every day, whether it's autonomous cars, advances in healthcare. I, I was just lecturing the other day how you know, the prevalence now of, of these scooters, you know, the, 
the uh, lime scooters and the bird scooters is going to challenge us with a new societal paradigm. Oh, right, yeah. Um, and it's got to all be based on science. And so HFES, first and foremost, is the home of producing the underlying science for which all designers could use to make products better. And so that's why I give it all of my volunteer attention because when that goes away and everything's just opinion and anecdotal and, you know, not the right way to design. Right. So this is like where we get to actually come together and, you know, talk about the new things and s- that we've either been studying and share them across so that we can actually take that stuff back with us and make sure that we're actually using it in the products we design. Uh, what are some things that you, you've you done in the past that have, like, helped HFAS kind of moving forward? Uh, a few things, I hope. Um, I was, I've had a few different roles. I was the past president. Um, earlier, before that, I devoted most of my volunteer work to students and mentoring. I was head of the, uh, all the student services and student career development. Um, so I tried to forward a bunch of initiatives, which are still around today, student career day, uh, and panels, mentoring, and stuff like that, early career professionals that um, get people into the society um, and enable them as young professionals. And then uh, later on, after becoming president and uh, serving some other roles, I turned my attention to outreach and to, because um, as much as I just mentioned the value of human factors and er- the human factors in ergonomic society fostering and protecting the science, if nobody uses it, right. we haven't accomplished much. So I then set out uh, to develop a series of initiatives for the science to get into industry. It started with creating the webinar series and more recently with creating uh, two external events. One, the healthcare symposium uh, on human factors and the other Ergo X, uh, both industry-facing uh, symposium that uh, blend science and application together. And that's, that's where we need to be. We need to produce the science and then actually play an active role in disseminating it in the, into industry. Yeah, you mentioned both Ergo X and uh, the healthcare symposium. We talked to Dave Rempel and Chris Reed on Monday about Ergo X. I want to sort of pick your brain about the healthcare symposium. And I mean, we did coverage of it uh, this year, but I, I want to get from your perspective, what is it and, and uh, what does it stand for also? So it's a conference devoted to human factors in healthcare. That's obvious from the name. But what's unique about it is, okay, this is, we're at the annual meeting. And let's face it, the annual meeting is our in-house celebration of our field, right? It's really for the members of the society. I mean, others are welcome to come, but it's first and foremost for the members of the Human Factors and Ergonomic Society to share their knowledge and information and to socialize, right, and network. The stated purpose of the healthcare symposium was to have half of its attendees and, and people involved in presenting be from the human factors community and half not. Mm. So it's, it's industry and government. We want the companies who make medical devices, drug delivery systems. We want the doctors who are in the OR for which we claim we're producing science to help. We want the nurses, sure. the hospital administrators. We want the, the FDA um, all in one place to talk about challenges in healthcare, talk about how to advance patient safety. And so there's people presenting science, there's people presenting success stories and best practices. And then what I really like about it is people just presenting insight into the context. In other words, someone just coming and saying, let me show you what happens in surgery. One of my favorite talks ever was someone who put a camera in the OR and then did a time-lapse presentation of all the people moving around and involved in a complicated, I think it was an open-heart surgery. Right. And then they just welcomed the audience to discuss issues they saw and then challenged the human factors community to help. And uh, 
So mm -hmm. it's a conference bringing all those factions together devoted to health care and human factors issues. And there's just nothing else like it. And it's grown every year. This is going to be the eighth year. And uh, it's, it's a really exciting event. Are there any big plans? I don't know if we can talk about any of this. I know some of it's not set in stone. Are there any big plans for the organization, healthcare symposium, anything that we can talk about? Uh, well, the symposium's just on a nice roll. I mean, no major changes. There's a potential that we might add a track um, in the next year or two, but that's just on a nice course. It happens every year around March or April. We have, you know, the next few years set in terms of the cities we're going to. I think there are some things on the horizon in the society uh, that will be interesting. And, and kind of one we're doing first in healthcare. I've been pushing the concept of paying it forward and affecting the science. So one of my, not really critiques, but let's just call it that, even of this society, is that um, we all meet, and whatever people have been doing, they share, which is great. But the society doesn't affect what people are doing. They just assimilate it. And mm. I would like the society in the future to say, you know, there's three challenges. Uh, well, there's more than three, but let's identify three challenges, three areas of human product interaction that need our attention and let's fund people to study them. Uh, let's actually affect things rather than just collect. And so I've pitched an initiative to give scholarships to um, early career professionals. Hmm. And my idea was you would pick some topics that are just societal, topical, and, and that need science. In other words, we don't have right. you know, the scooter one. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And the other day I'm walking down to my car in the university parking lot and the landing to get to my car has a scooter in the middle of it. And I was like, I don't know if that's okay. Uh, yeah, what kind like, of safety concerns is this yeah, going to right. pose later? It wasn't later. even safety. It was just like, why is there a scooter, like, right, you know, in my pathway? Yeah. Um, but so the idea is to pick topics and then, um, you know, have people give them a year and then have them come back and present. So it's kind of driving then, the research into these domains. Driving it, not just collecting it, right. not being a passive society, being an active. And other societies do that. What I did is I, I went and searched in some other societies, and I noticed, not all of them, but some of the better societies across different domains, they do that. They give awards and scholarships for people to tackle you know, emerging uh, topical um, areas. And so that's something I'm pushing. I've gotten some very positive feedback so far, and we're actually trying to do it. Well, we're going to do it for healthcare this year. Uh, we haven't oh, announced great. it yet. So there's that's a pre-announcement, awesome. but we're going to identify a topic, and we're going to give a scholarship this year to um, an early career professional, and then they will get awarded that the start of that in Chicago at our event uh, this uh, spring. And they'll come back a year later in Toronto in uh, 2020 and present the results of their year of work. That's excellent. So. Um, Blake, I know we kind of switched topics, and I'm sure you have a million questions about the healthcare symposium because you were actually fortunate enough to go this year. Yeah, and that's one thing that I have to say, like interact or going to the, some of the talks because I hadn't been to the healthcare symposium before, so I didn't really know what to expect, to be completely honest. And going to a lot of the talks and actually hearing doctors be giving the presentations instead of just a lot of human factors people and then it being a lot of times open forum stuff just start asking questions and like hey there's problems that i'm running into how can how would you guys tackle this kind of problem it's just a very interesting setup and what kind of inspired you to move in that direction of really trying to make sure that it was a, a little more industry focused in terms of like bringing them in the door to talk with us and have us all in the same room well, when I first realized, and I wasn't the only one to do this, that healthcare was becoming the most dominant domain, and it is now our largest technical group. Uh, I think we have more talks, even in this meeting, on healthcare than any other topic, yet we still have enough content for an entire additional symposium. That's incredible. Uh, so it's incredible. It makes sense, though. Healthcare affects every person on the planet. You can't say that about many other products that's true or, right. right so not everyone drives and cares about automobiles although many 
Uh, but any age, right. any culture, healthcare affects you. So, um, so it's just such a dominant topic. And, um, and then when I, so just thinking about having more um, outlets for healthcare, human factors work, that wasn't difficult, right? But then when I thought about it, uh, I challenged myself to think about what would make it different than this meeting or what, what it needs to be that this meeting isn't. And, um, and I realized it really needed to be industry facing. Like I didn't want just people sitting in a room uh, talking about just science. I wanted people talking about their needs for science. And I also wanted people talking about how they've already applied it and sharing best practices. Like this, yeah. is, this is how you improve safety in the operating room. This is how you make it um, safer and less injury prone for nurses to move patients. This is how you design a cardiac monitor with success and, and to have a conference where you might even say you saved lives through the interactions and information dissemination that took place. Right. It almost it almost kind of feels like an extension of outreach, right? Where you're you're talking to other communities, other scientific communities that may not be familiar with human factors and trying to find where the common ground is, where we can help them and where they can help us. And I think that's great. Yeah, in fact, some people go to that and don't know anything about human factors, which I love that they <laughs> saw something in the description or heard from a colleague that resonated with them and compelled them to go to an event in which they still don't understand the core topic of the event. Uh, right. And then usually the experience is pretty amazing uh, for them, uh, for healthcare providers, and for, you know, it's also helping industrial design firms, product design firms, who, you know, like to say that they design with science in mind, but don't always really know yeah. the latest science that they could be applying to make you know healthcare products better also there's a big regulatory component in the healthcare industry and the conference helps with that so there's a, a a more even pragmatic side to the event in which the fda comes and people talk about you know better pathways right. and efficient pathways for getting quality products approved um, and that's important. Yeah, that's all great. I know we're running up a little bit against time, but I just want to ask you is if there's anywhere our listeners want to go, if they can find out more information about HFES, Healthcare Symposium, uh, what kind of uh, resources are available to them? I would just start with the HFES website. And on that website, there's a menu called Events. Of course, we're at one of the events listed there, the annual meeting. And the one right below that will be the Healthcare Symposium. And if they land on that, they'll learn everything about the symposium. Again, the next one's coming up in March in Chicago. Chicago's been our record. Atten we were there once before, and we broke our record. And uh, it's obviously a big city, but a right. uh, big healthcare uh, city and environment as well. And the Midwest just is in general. And so we're expecting it to be a blowout event and uh, maximize our attendance and to be just an am amazing event. That's excellent. And maybe a little spoiler, we talked about it just before the show, but looks like we might be going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to have you there. And there'll be so many people that will enjoy talking to both of you. And, uh, and again, you'll, you know, if, if you sample right, we'll get some, some physicians, some nurses, yeah. some regulatory people, some researchers, some practitioners. You'll get such a great mix. I think it'll, it'll make for a great podcast collection. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Well, uh, Dr. Tony Andre, thank you so much for joining us today on the show. Um, you know, as we like to round these things out, we, uh, we, we like to say this phrase, it depends. Because I'm sure, as you know, everything in human factors kind of depends on the human, on the situation, what's going on. So as we round out this podcast, I'll, I'll count us down and we'll all say it depends. All right. I say it often. So <laughs> exactly. here we go. It shouldn't be hard. Three, two, one. It, it depends. depends.